I did blood test yesterday and I'm still feeling so faint and hungry and that's on anemia. <laughs> If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be my March TBR. I am very excited because every month I like to try and do some challenges. I might do more than one for a reading vlog. I'm realizing I haven't chosen one and I did four. Well, I'm doing the fourth one this weekend for February. So I'm really in the mood for reading vlogs. So I might have to plan one because I'm looking at my pile and don't get me wrong, there's about like nine, 10 books. So it's excessive, but it looks like it's the amount of books I will have read in February. So uh, someone is definitely not in a slump. Let me go through all the books that I'm hoping to get to this month. First off, the book that we chose for Patreon. For anyone interested, you can come and read it with us. Actually, let me start by saying the challenge because I made you vote, you had four options. We're gonna get to reading all of them this year, so it's all good. But I wanted to read only from female authors because March Woman, International Women's Day, and I was realizing that last month and even last year, the majority of the authors that I've read were male authors. And even when I look at my shelves, I feel like I have a lot of male authors and I never want to read more than 50% from authors just because, I mean, most of the recommendation you hear for uh, fantasy, sci-fi, which are my main genres, they're always male authors. So I wanted to make sure that my reading is a bit more diverse. So these were your four options and you voted for Jade City by Fundali, which I've been dying to read it for so long. I believe the third book is actually coming out this year. So if we like it, we can binge read this year. This is an adult fantasy series. I believe that it has been compared to The Godfather. So I'm assuming a lot of like political intrigue. There is also Kung Fu and magic, which if you want to make me read a book, just put magic in there and I will read it. And yes, this is the one that you also wanted to read. It's also pretty chunky. I feel like most of the books in that challenge will be. Uh, it has exactly 500 pages, so we can easily do that for sure. Very excited. So this is our first pick of the month. I have two arcs that I want to read this month because I've been dying to. The first one is by Becky Chambers. She's one of my favorite authors. It sounds like it's not gonna be my cup of tea, but she just is. Her writing is amazing. I find it very calming. It's always super diverse. It's always sci-fi, character-driven one. And I read one by her last month. I wanna do the same thing this month. This one is coming out, I believe, in July, but definitely this year. And uh, <laughs> all I know is Monk and Robots. I mean, at this point, I will read everything that she writes, so I will be reading it and letting you know my thoughts on it, but it's just the beginning of a new series, so we'll for sure get around to reading that one. I also have an audiobook of a book coming out, I believe, in April. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, Jenny Lawson, she's coming out with a third book, nonfiction. I'm assuming it's also going to be about her mental health, which she seems to do a lot of books about it, and I'm all for it. Uh, it's usually... She uses humor to talk about a very serious topic that affects her seriously and other people. And I loved her two other books. I especially enjoyed Furiously Happy, which that cover though. <laughs> and I will continue to read anything and everything by her. And I definitely recommend the audiobook. I believe she's the one narrating the other ones. That's how I went through her books. And I'm hoping she will be the one narrating that one too. Two advanced reader copies to read before they come out so I can let you know which ones you should look forward to. Now, let's go through the ones that I have on my waiting list at the library because I have a few and I don't want to forget. The first one is Exit Strategy by Martha Wells, which is the fourth book in the Murderbot series. I love Murderbot. Uh, if you want a funny sci-fi, I feel like it's not something I see a lot of. And Murderbot is a robot and they're just, they don't really like humans and it just makes it for very, very funny stories. And like, look, I do own the first book. They're short. They're really, really short. They're quick. They're fun. Uh, the first book I really enjoyed, two and three, well, three to second half was really good. The first half was a little slow, but I've heard that it keeps getting better. So fourth one is apparently just as good. I believe the fifth book is much longer. I'm hoping to catch up. Basically the sixth book is coming out later this year and I'm trying to just get around to catching up. So we'll definitely get to that one for sure this month. I have been reading a lot more uh, mystery thriller horror than I usually do, probably because I was doing my one week, one shelf this month in February. So I've been in the mood and I have Dead to Her by Sarah Pinborough, the same author as Behind Her Eyes, which that's a TV show. I didn't know it became a TV show. I am, I'm, I need to watch that. But yes, I have only read that one book, Behind Her Eyes by Her, and 
it was all over the place. I know a lot of people hate it. And in theory, it sounds like something I would not enjoy whatsoever. Yet, I was all for it because I was prepared that the ending would be ridiculous. And I really enjoyed it because of that. So I am willing to give her a second shot. So we'll do that with Dead to Her. And I'll let you know uh, if it's good or not. I believe it came out last year. Okay, the next one. I pinky promised myself that I was reading it this year. And I mean, if I'm reading female authors, it is a time. Um, Children of God by Mary Doria Russell. I know I've mentioned it a few times, but it is part of my 21 books that I want to read in 2021. So for sure it's happening. It's happening. This is the second book after The Sparrow, which is also, I believe, becoming, is it a movie or a TV show? I am so excited because more people need to read that book. Obviously look up some uh, trigger warnings because it is pretty intense, but I adored it. It's such a different first contact with alien kind of book and I just need to finish the duology. I was hesitating because, I mean, sometimes books are just better as standalones, but everyone says it's good. So I will get around to reading that one. I believe this is the last, well, possibly the last one I will have time to get to at my library. White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. And uh, I have been meaning to read more books about racism. I read um, How to Be an Anti-Racist last year and a lot of people were recommend it, recommending this one to me. So I will get around to that one hopefully this month. I have other ones, but like I have like 19 weeks to wait for Hood Feminism. So it will happen later this year, just not now. But uh, yes, they're saying like two weeks for White Fragility. So I think I will have time to get around to that one for March. Now, let's go through some physical books. Um, first off, Black Sun. I believe this is fantasy. For some reason, that cover keeps getting me vibes of sci-fi, and I always want to say sci-fi, but I'm pretty sure it's fantasy. <laughs> it's the first book in a series. You can tell I don't know a lot about it, but it is part of my Goodreads reading challenge slash a lot of people were saying this actually really good, so... I'm excited, a little intimidated just because, you know, hardcovers. It's 450 pages, but I've been going through books a lot, like I was saying in February, so I'm definitely in the mood for more fantasy. I have been meaning to read that book forever. Kindred. I have so many books from this author on my shelves, and I'm a little intimidated because I feel like, I don't know why, like it's written small, <laughs> but I feel like they're going to be very heavy, and I did read a couple actually last month that were pretty heavy, but I am clearly in the mood to continue to do so. She tends to mix sci-fi and kind of historical fiction talking about slavery. And I believe this is the case with this one and <sighs> a little nervous. I believe it's time traveling too in this one. Yes, from the back, it sounds like it, but I don't want to butcher the synopsis. It's only 260 pages, but I feel like it's going to take me a while to go through it and it's okay. I mean, I can always read more than one book at the same time if it's emotionally too difficult to go through one at a time. So yes, if you wanted to read it, March, I'm doing it. Also, I wanted to give this author another shot. <laughs> um, Leanne Moriarty. Um, the Husband's Secret is one of her books that I have on my shelf that I have not read yet. I read Big Little Lies, loved it. A little to my surprise and then I read Nine Perfect Strangers hated it so I wanted to see was it just like a one-hit wonder for me or maybe I will like more by her this seems to be kind of like more middle ground in terms of reviews in general and it's 400 pages but it's one of those books that you can go through so fast for sure and again I have been in the mood for mysteries so We'll try that one, we'll let you know. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I feel like my TBR is not that excessive. I feel like it's a lot of books, but they're not all too big and I have been meaning to read them for so long that I'm just so excited. Plus I did so well in February. So see, I knew I was forgetting something, Outlander. I am 40% into it. I'm hoping to finish it in March. I started it part of my, uh, it was the Rainbow Shelf reading vlog and I did not end up finishing it. I mean, the book is like 800 pages, so it makes sense, and I went through it as an audiobook. I took the physical book, and I feel like it's gonna be difficult for me to finish it that way, so I will get it again from my library as an audiobook and try to complete it. I did watch the first episode of a TV show. So far, I feel like it's a very chill kind of ambiance kind of TV show and book, so it's fine. Uh, there's a lot of sex scene for me, um, it's just not really my jam romance in general. And I've been warned about some of the content that's coming. Probably when that happens, I'll just stop. So 
We'll see. I don't feel like my TBR looks that crazy to me, at least at the moment. Maybe it's because I read so much last month or that I've had these on my shelf for so long. I've been meaning to read them that I'm just really excited. I might add, like I was saying, a little reading vlog of some kind, either with these books or whatever challenge pops into my mind because I feel like I don't have that many books. I say that and I shouldn't say that. Maybe my March wrap up will be like, yeah, girl, you were wrong. <laughs> So that's gonna be it for my March TBR. Please let me know what books you are planning on reading this month. If you have read these, what do you think about them? Obviously, spoiler free. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. On Sunday, actually. My reading vlog. <laughs> Bye.